Welcome back to another malware analysis video. My name is Anuj Soni, and today I'll discuss my favorite way to debug a DLL. For this walkthrough, we'll focus on a malicious DLL associated with the well-known Emotep family. To understand how to debug a DLL, a bit of background is helpful. First, a DLL or dynamic link library is a type of portable executable file in Windows that contains code for use by multiple programs. So instead of duplicating the same code across multiple applications, a developer can create one DLL that contains commonly used functions and other programs can use those functions by referencing that single DLL. Some Windows malware is packaged as a DLL and executing a .dll for behavioral or debugging analysis is a little different than launching a .exe. An exe can typically be directly executed, for example, by double-clicking it. Because DLLs are designed to be used by another program, double-clicking on a DLL won't work. Now, one common way to execute a DLL is using the built-in Windows program rundll32.exe. The syntax for using that program is rundll32, followed by the DLL file name, followed by an optional entry point, followed by optional arguments. It might be clear that the DLL file refers to the path to the DLL to execute, and arguments are values used by a function in the DLL. But what's the entry point about? Well, if you execute the DLL simply with rundll32.exe followed by the DLL file name, it'll start executing from the entry point specified in the header of the PE file. For some malware, that might be sufficient, but the whole purpose of a DLL is to share functionality. And this is often done using an export. A DLL export is a function within a DLL that is available for use by other programs or DLLs. Let's explore this idea of a DLL and its export with an example. I've jumped into my VM now, and here on the desktop, I have an Emotet DLL that I've very creatively named bad.dll, and I'm going to toss it into PE Studio for some brief static file analysis. As you can see, PE Studio identifies this DLL as a 32-bit dynamic link library. On the left-hand side, we have a section called exports, and here we see a single export listed, a function that is offered up for use by other programs. A DLL could have many exported functions, but here we see just one. Functions can be exported by name and ordinal, which is a numerical value. Here we have a function exported by name, and that name again is control underscore run DLL. In malware, exports are often where noteworthy functionality resides, so they are generally worth exploring. One way to assess if this exported function contains anything of substance is with some behavioral analysis. For that, I'm going to go ahead and minimize PE Studio, and I'm going to launch Process Hacker for some visibility into what is happening on this machine once I choose to actually execute the sample. Next, I'm going to go ahead and launch the command prompt here and place it on the bottom left. And there are a couple different tests that I'm going to perform. First, I'm going to type in the command line I mentioned earlier for launching a DLL with run DLL32. So I'm going to type run DLL32. You could add the .exe, but you don't have to. Next, I'll type the name of the DLL, bad.dll. I don't need to add the full path here because I'm located currently at the desktop within my command prompt. If I go ahead and just run this command here, again, it is going to run the DLL from the entry point specified in the header of this portable executable file format. So I'm paying attention on the right-hand side to see if anything happens if I just generically execute this DLL with run DLL32 without specifying any specific function as an entry point. Notice on the right-hand side, we don't see a whole lot of activity. Now, that could mean the activity took place so quickly that Process Hacker didn't detect it, or it could mean that nothing happened. Let's try another test. Instead of simply executing run DLL32 followed by the DLL name, I'm now going to add an entry point. And I'm going to add the entry point that we noticed in PE Studio, which again was control underscore run DLL. So I'll type in control underscore run DLL. And now again, I'm going to hit enter here in a moment and pay attention to the right-hand side and look for any activity. Notice in this case, we do see the run dll32.exe process launch indicating something has happened. And certainly there is a stark contrast between this result and when I simply typed in the DLL without specifying an entry point. I then go to the network tab here to get some visibility into what's happening on the network live. I will notice at least one row. Sometimes I've seen several, but here you can see that coming from the run dll32.exe process is some network activity. We just saw another IP address pop up here as well. 
So this is also notable, and it's an indication that there is some interesting code that resides within this exported function. Of course, I could explore this further by using Remnux to launch Wireshark and other server tools, but what I've already seen is sufficient to conclude that the exported function is worth investigating. In addition to behavioral analysis, static code analysis also indicates something interesting might be happening via this exported function. I've already gone ahead and loaded this DLL into Ghidra, and I want to focus your attention on this compare instruction. You'll see that it's comparing the contents of the EDX register with 5A4D. You might recognize 4D5A as the glorious MZ, often indicating the beginning of a Windows executable. Checking two bytes in memory for a 4D5A is actually a common step for malicious loaders that deobfuscate a Windows executable in memory and is one way that the loader confirms it correctly decoded an executable. If we take a look at the function call trees and focus on the incoming calls, we'll see that one path to actually arrive at the function where this compare for the 4D5A resides is via the exported function that we saw earlier. To evaluate if there is a deobfuscated executable in memory when this exported function is launched, we'll use the same command line we ran earlier, but this time in a debugger. This is a 32-bit DLL, so first I'll launch x32 debug from my desktop. I'll go ahead and double click on x32 debug. Notice I'm not going to drag and drop the DLL. That is one approach you could use, but I'm going to show you an alternative method that has worked for me. So next I'm going to go to file, open. And I'm going to browse to the path for rondelo32.exe, specifically the 32-bit version of rondelo32.exe, since I'm debugging a 32-bit DLL. So in here, I'll type C, Windows, syswow64, hit enter. And then I'll click down here and simply start typing rondll32, and it, I have arrived there. I'll press open. So as you look at the top of this window, you'll see I'm currently in rondelo32.exe. Now I'm going to update the command line for this debugging session. To do that, I'll go to File, Change Command Line. I'm going to update this command line to essentially reflect the command line I used when performing behavioral analysis. So after the reference to rundll32.exe, I'm going to type the full path to the DLL. That is at C, Users, Rem, Desktop, Bad, .dll. And I'm also going to add the exported function that we already know contains some functionality of interest. So I do a comma and then control underscore run DLL. One other change I need to make is I'll go to options, preferences. Then I'll need to check the DLL entry checkbox. Then I'll save this and perform a debug restart. Now, if I run this program, I should arrive at the entry point for my bad.dll. I'm going to go ahead and run via this button right here. And notice now, according to the menu bar at the top, I am in bad.dll and not in rundll32.exe anymore. This is exactly where I hoped to arrive. I want to take this a step further and arrive at the beginning of the exported function. Here's what you need to do. You go to symbols. Then on the left-hand side, click on the DLL, bad.dll. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see a list of the exports and imports. The export of interest is this first one right here. So I'll go ahead and right-click and choose Toggle Breakpoint. As you can see on the left-hand side, it looks like I have, in fact, been successful in setting that breakpoint. But to confirm this, I'll go back to the CPU tab and then continue running the program. As you can see, I've now arrived at the beginning of the exported function. Next, if we want to determine if this DLL actually does deobfuscate a Windows executable in memory, we can set a breakpoint near the compare instruction that looked for the 4D5A. To determine the precise address at which I want to set a breakpoint, I'll hop back to Ghidra's code browser here and return back to the compare instruction. Now, this is the compare instruction right here, but you'll notice that EDX is actually populated in the previous instruction. This move instruction takes two bytes at the address specified in ECX and places them into EDX. Those two bytes are then compared with 5A4D. What this means is I want to take a look at what is happening in memory at the address specified by ECX. And if you're wondering why it's comparing the value with 5A4D instead of 4D5A, that's because the two-byte value located at the address specified by ECX is going to be interpreted as little endian. I'm going to copy the address of this move instruction go back to x32 debug, and in the command window at the bottom, type bp, followed by this address that I just copied, hit enter, 
And now I'm in a position to continue running the program and hopefully it will arrive at the address where I can evaluate the contents of ECX. I'll now continue to run the program. I've arrived at this move instruction. And if I right click on ECX here on the top right and follow and dump, notice I do in fact encounter that MZ header that I was seeking. I can further evaluate this potential Windows executable in memory by right clicking and then choosing follow in memory map. Next, you'll right click on the region in memory that is highlighted and choose dump memory to file. If you want to place this on the desktop, you can do so and just rename this to dumped.bin. A good next step would be to toss that dumped file into PE Studio for further confirmation that it is in fact a Windows executable, but I'll leave those follow on steps to you. I hope you enjoyed this video on my approach to debugging a malicious DLL. If you want to see future malware analysis videos that I upload, please subscribe to this channel. And finally, if you have ideas for other topics you'd like me to explore, let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.